Well, joining us now to discuss the situation further is Robert Patman. He's a professor of international relations at Otago University in Dunedin. Robert, thanks so much for your time this evening. Uh, look, we've heard a lot of talk. We have seen a lot of muscle being flexed. How soon is this invasion going to happen? Well, Russia is engaged in the biggest military build-up since the end of the Cold War. And uh, Russia has assembled about 130,000 troops, plus accompanying logistics and artillery. And uh, the build-up has now entered a new phase. Um, uh, vital enablers of war, like field hospitals and engineering units, have been placed in the front. Um, we know all this through both US spy satellites and NATO satellites, but also because of commercial satellites confirming what the spy satellites are telling us. This is an unprecedented build-up in the post-Cold War period. Difficult to predict exactly what might happen next, but it's a, it's a worrying trend. Certainly very scary. How do you think this will play out for Vladimir Putin if Moscow decides to invade? How big is the pushback going to be and from whom? Well, I think it could come, first of all, I don't think, as one Russian military critic has said of the build-up, it's not going to be a walk in the park. Eastern Europe and most countries in Eastern Europe are firmly behind uh, Ukraine. And Ukraine is a significant country of 45 million plus people, and its military capabilities have improved enormously since Russia annexed Crimea in 2014. So I think it could turn out to be a very messy conflict and considerable loss of life on both sides. And um, this, is, this would be, I think, a reckless gamble by Pre uh, President Putin. We should remember in the post-Cold War era, invasions by great powers, we only have to think, remember the US invasion of Iraq, do not have a particularly promising track record. So what's it going to take to get Putin to pull the pin? Because we've seen the presidents of France, the UK, uh, people from Germany uh, fly to Eastern Europe recently in last minute attempts to solve this dispute diplomatically. He is being urged not to do it. Why is diplomacy not working here? I think it's the nature of his demands, Carly. Uh, he's demanding uh, that Ukraine can never join NATO. In other words, he's demanding a veto over the security choices of a democratic neighbour. Uh, and he's also demanding that NATO effectively pull back out of the whole of Eastern Europe. 14 Eastern, Euro 14 Eastern European countries have joined NATO in the post-Cold War period. So there's not too much to negotiate about from a Western point of view. Uh, Mr Putin is basically demanding a, a buffer state in the Ukraine. And uh, that's very difficult for democracies to accept because why should Mr Putin have a veto over the security policies of other countries, uh, particularly when he's got he's representing an authoritarian regime and um, Ukraine is a democracy? Professor Robert Patman, appreciate your insight this evening. Thank you.